Have you ever taken a road trip to the mountains or somewhere high up and noticed that your little city car isn't putting down the power like it usually does back home? Well, that makes sense, right? There's less oxygen higher up, which means less power. But how high is too high for a car? With the right parts, can a car keep driving to the highest peak of Everest? I mean, what if we had an infinite road? Could it go all the way up to space? Well, today we are gonna find the answers to all those questions by drawing up what mods my Camaro would need to make this theoretical journey to space. A journey that no man or woman has done before. Let's go. Thanks again to our friends at Omaze for sponsoring today's episode of Bumper to Bumper. It's no secret that the Germans have nearly perfected luxury and performance, and that's never been more apparent with the 2020 Audi RS Q8. Now this car isn't just fast, it's an engineering marvel. I mean, it's a big SUV with all the luxury bells and whistles, yet it does zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds. That's crazy. And what's even crazy crazier is that this car could be yours with taxes and shipping included and 20,000 big ones. And what's even better is that every donation supports the Ronald Reagan Medical Center at UCLA. That's the same place that saved our dear buddy and friend Jane Pumphrey's life. So go over to omaze.com slash donut and enter for your chance to win. Now let's get back to B2B baby. <laughs> We all know an engine needs oxygen to mix with fuel that then gets ignited to create combustion. And we get that oxygen component from air. And the air around us right now is 21% oxygen at sea level. And for proper combustion, an engine needs three parts oxygen for every one part of fuel. And with the oxygen content of air, that ends up being about 14.7 to one. But at high altitudes, the air begins to get less dense. The oxygen percentage stays the same, but there's less air in a given volume. So the engine can't take in as much oxygen and starts losing power. No, no, we don't like that. So how high can a car actually get before it totally runs out of power? Well, the world record was actually just set in 2019 with some Mercedes Unimogs climbing the world's tallest active volcano in Chile. Now they reached an altitude of 21,962 feet above sea level, but they were really only limited by terrain. They were less than 700 feet from the peak. So close to 22,000 feet is pretty high, but what if they had been on an infinite road leading to space. Now, before we can put a car on our infinite road, we gotta make the road. Let's call it the Jerry Turnpike. There's gonna be some tolls. Sorry, it's, it costs money to go to space, people. Now, this road essentially just going to be a straight road going all the way up from Los Angeles straight up to space. But the interstate system can only have a max incline of 7%. But this is the Jerry Turnpike and we don't gotta follow those rules. So I'm gonna make it a steep 20% incline San Francisco style, like my favorite type of bread. Where are my sourdough fans at? Jerry's French Toast, check out the recipe. Now that we have our road, what vehicle are we gonna use as our starting point to take us on this journey? Since this is my road, we're gonna run this experiment with my car as well, the old Catfish Camaro. Now this car weighs about 3,500 pounds, it's a beefy boy. So when I'm driving straight like this on a road that's relatively flat, doesn't have any inclination, I don't really need that much torque to propel forward. All I need is enough torque to resist the frictional force of the tires to the road. And that's probably around 10 foot pounds of torque. But on a 20% incline, we got gravity and it's trying to get me to go back down the hill. I need 685 pounds of force just to prevent me to stop rolling. But luckily, I got 340 foot pounds of torque in this catfish and some gearing to help me out. Now, this is how much power we need the engine to make to keep going. If air gets too thin to make this much power, we're stuck. 
So knowing that we need as much oxygen to at least give us 25% power, otherwise we can't go forward. So if I tried to take my car up this imaginary road, the air would be getting thinner and thinner. And by only about 20,000 feet, I'd be down to half power. And just before 40,000 feet, my LS1 would be making just enough power to not roll back. And I would have to have been in first gear for like the last 20 miles. So clearly this isn't gonna work. We're gonna need more torque. So why don't we try to give Catfish a little more torque? Let's give it a diesel engine, one that produces the most torque from the factory today, the 6.7 liter Power Stroke V8 turbo diesel found in the F350 Super Duty. And it makes 1,050 foot pounds of torque. Now I know I probably should be using a Duramax engine and my Camaro. So my Chevy Ford guys, you guys are just gonna have to deal with it. We're gonna have to come together to create this magic machine. We'll call it the Chord. So by factoring in the weight of that power stroke engine and the new gearing we have, we now need 93 foot pounds of torque just to stand still. But that's okay, because that's less than a 10th of our new peak torque. We've got so much torque that we wouldn't run out of air until 60,000 feet. That is twice the height of Mount Everest. But oh, how I wish it was just as simple as just having enough torque. Now, as you may know, the higher you get in altitude, the more the temperature drops. That's why there's snow on the mountains, Tyler. Our new engine, as torquey as it may be, is a diesel engine. And diesels go through a weird process when it gets cold. It's called diesel jelly, meaning as the temperature drops, diesel fuel begins to thicken. It becomes more viscous. So we put some diesel in the freezer to show you exactly what happens. Now diesel gelling can start as high as 17 degrees Fahrenheit. And as the fuel thickens up, it gets harder and harder to spray it through the injectors. So this spray bottle is representing a fuel injector and inside it, we have diesel at room temperature. And as you can see, it sprays out nice. It's a nice fine mist. But as the diesel starts to gel up, you can see that it doesn't mist through our spray bottle. It actually gets clogged up and doesn't spray out at all which makes it pretty much useless. So for our space car build, we could use winterized diesel or we could use a block heater so our diesel doesn't gel like this is right now. But by 30,000 feet, our temperatures reach minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And we know that we're eventually gonna run out of oxygen. That's gonna be our limiting factor. Therefore, our diesel engine, it's not gonna cut it. So I think we're gonna need another engine transplant. So let's chuck out the old power stroke and drop in a powertrain that isn't oxygen limited, a Tesla battery pack and motors. Now we got a Tesla and a Camaro, a Tamaro. Our Tesla motors, they make plenty of torque, the equivalent of 900 foot pounds. And that torque doesn't decrease as we travel higher and higher. But, and there's always a freaking but, colder temperatures increase a battery's internal resistance, making it harder to pass energy to the motors. So by zero degrees Fahrenheit, most batteries are operating at only 50% capacity. An air temperature can get to zero degrees Fahrenheit as low as 15,000 feet. But hold on, there's no way that this is where our car stops. I mean, we've had working cars on the moon for 50 years and the moon gets like minus 238 degrees Fahrenheit. So how did NASA manage to overcome this temperature issue? Let's look at the Mars rover Curiosity. Curiosity has to stand up to Martian surface temperatures as low as minus 146 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Mars rover keeps its battery warm with two things. The first is a special layer of insulation called silica aerogel. I'm sure YouTube has recommended Derek's video on Veritasium. It's really cool, you should check it out. But this substance is super, super unique. It's a silicone-based substance, a thousand times less dense than glass, and it's made of 99.8% air. Now this powerful material blocks heat from leaving the rover. And the second thing Curiosity rover has is eight radioisotope heater units. And those are one watt heaters made from a decaying low grade isotope. The sucker is literally radioactive. Okay, so if we know that, let's get back 
to the Camaro. With its new Tesla motors and Tesla battery, we're adding the aerogel insulation around the whole car to keep both the battery and the cabin warm. We got oxygen tanks for me and my girl Blanche, she's riding up there with me. And we're also adding in the RHU heaters near the battery and maybe some lead shielding because I don't want to grow a third arm from these radioactive heaters. And since we've got an electric motor, we don't need to worry about losing torque so we can add some weight without issue. Now the catfish is kitted out for high altitude travel and the battery should be able to withstand over 100 degrees below operating temperatures. So that gets us well past the 15,000 foot mark where our batteries would have only been about 50% capacity. But again, pretty soon we're going to hit a new problem, wind speed. So as we go further from the Earth's surface, the wind speed increases. You might have watched a video of ours where we talked about the laminar air and boundary layer air on an F1 car. And this is a similar effect, but on a massive scale. Basically, air closer to the surface gets slowed down by the presence of the ground itself, while air higher up can move more freely. And the result of which is that about 20,000 feet, wind speeds can reach 150 miles an hour, about the speed of a category three tornado. Luckily, our Camaro is weighed down a bit with the batteries and lead shielding, but by 35,000 feet, even the modified catfish would be struggling to stay on the road but we've just barely made it to the stratosphere, the cruising altitude of most jetliners. So at this height, we're gonna to want to make a few more modifications. We need to pressurize the cabin so that Blanche and I don't lose oxygen. We need to deflate the tires from the inside to make sure they don't pop. And actually Humvees and Unimogs, they have a system like this to lower tire pressure for tougher off-roading. So let's fit some Humvee wheels and axles on our little red sports car. Now that'll add some weight, which will help us avoid getting blown off the road, which is good, but let's add some more batteries, some external oxygen tanks and solar panels, just to make sure we make the whole journey. Now, we've got a car that can go the distance. And as we set off again for a little while, it looks gonna be smooth sailing, we'll be fine. But as we drive through the stratosphere, we'll cross the ozone layer and beyond that, temperatures will begin to rise again. And the effects of wind speed will also drop as the air keeps getting thinner and thinner. Now at the upper part of the stratosphere, air is a thousand times thinner than at sea level. It's so thin that no plane wing could generate enough lift to keep itself aloft here. At 127,000 feet, we'd be passing the height Felix Baumgartner set the skydive record from. Even weather balloons would be maxing out at 160,000 feet, but as long as we've still got power, we're gonna keep on going into the mesosphere. And at about 62 miles above the Earth's surface, we'd reach what's known as the Kármán line. And this is the boundary to outer space in the end of the mesosphere. This is where the last bits of air pressure are gone and we truly reach the vacuum of space. Now gravity, it would still be very much in play, but without any atmosphere, temperatures up here would drop below what the Mars rover was designed to withstand, about minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is probably the limit of what our battery heater can handle, but guys, we did it. We got to space. Woo! Where my catfish boy is at. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Bumper to Bumper. If you want to know more about real cars dealing with performance at high altitudes and not just me making up this crazy scenario, you should go check out this episode of the Donut Podcast on the history of the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. Hit me up on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. Hit freaking Donut up on Instagram at Donut Media. Until next week, bye for now.